IBM comes out with an ML inference card. So we should be surprised, but we shouldn't be surprised, Daniel, uh, at this, in that uh, we saw uh, when the Z16 chip came out, it had an integrated AI block uh, called Tellum, okay? So essentially what the company has done is they've taken that, that block, which is very scalable, and they talked about this, they made a much bigger chip, and then they put it on a PCIe uh, Express card that you could put in basically uh, any, any server out there. There wasn't as much information about the chip and the card as I would have liked, and I, I actually had to ask IBM uh, a couple of questions. I never saw the word inference in the blog, and man, I looked at it, but I did see training in, in there twice, so I was wondering, hey, wait a second, tell them was inference, real-time inference, uh, low latency inference, is this their training play that you could run you know, in a power or uh, in an x86 uh, system? Uh, but the answer is no. This is absolutely an inference card. And the key here is, as we've seen, and sometimes I think it's better to be later than first, the industry has gone from a very high degree of precision, 32-bit uh, to 16-bit to 8-bit to 4-bit, uh, where you don't need all of the accuracy to do good inference. So this is a low uh, bit rate inference card. Um, I don't know how many watts it's at, so I don't know uh, how small the form factor could be at the edge. I don't know if it if it needs passive or or active uh, cooling. So they left a lot of questions out there. But I think the, the the big story here is that IBM Research is doing things that are surprising us all, right? Uh, you and I spent gosh three days between uh, uh, Yorktown and where was it? Yorktown, you and I have both been to Poughkeepsie for Z. What was the third uh, city city we went to? Albany. 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 Yeah, Albany Nanotech. So this is um, this came out from the research group, not the product groups. So uh, I think we're going to have to see exactly how this is is productized in the future. But I, I think it shows the very high capabilities of of the IBM research team that you and I have spent a lot of time with. Why didn't they tell us about this when we were on site, man? They they even stealthed us, Daniel. But listen, you can't tell everybody everything. Uh, but we're gonna have to get uh, these folks on the uh, on the six five pod to tell us uh, more about this and what they're gonna do with it. I know we're talking to uh, Rob Thomas next week about some Watson ML. Maybe we could sneak in an AIU ask, but I'm not sure he'd be the right person because uh, it's research. Pat, I'm gonna give you a paragraph out of my impending research note. When will the AIU chip be ready for enterprise use? How much will it cost? Is it a work in progress already in mass production? Those questions weren't clear from the initial AIU announcement. What is clear is that IBM recognized it's beyond time to change the way AI computing happens. Now, a little bit, um, you know, markety maybe when I say that, but what I walked away like you was there's a lot of questions yet, but I do like very much that IBM is continuing to plant its flag it's leaning into semiconductor manufacturing, uh, design, uh, research. And by the way, with the recent passage of the Chips and Technology Act, we know that IBM has its hand up and saying, hey, we're another company with really uh, tremendous uh, engineering talent, um, uh, manufacturing capabilities or research to support those capabilities, intellectual property. So over the year, Pat, we've seen the two nanometer announcement come out from IBM. We're seeing the AIU, which we needed another uh, acronym, by the way. I feel like this is important that we add this to the GPU, VPU, DPU, uh, CPU. One more. AIU, what, what, what? QPU. Q, the quantum quantum processing unit, nice. Um, but I, I, like I said, I look at this more as IBM, really, like I said, planting a flag, raising its hand, clearly articulating our, it, its intent to participate in a more meaningful way with its intellectual property, democratizing and making it available to the market. And in an era of US-based semiconductor 
design and manufacture being more in demand than ever before, and IBM's obvious improved performance based on our third, fourth topic, third topic, third topic, it's not a terrible time for, for IBM to make sure the world knows it's also making big contributions in semiconductor technology. So that's kind of where I saw it. Um, it's interesting. It's exciting. There's so many more questions than answers right now. But uh, Pat, it wouldn't be the 6.5 if we didn't put a little speculation and analysis around um, what was sort of a loose but exciting and interesting press release. Yeah, probably the most important, which I forgot in my in my diatribe, was software. Like, what is the middleware that it's going to be using? Right? Does it use, you know, CUDA? Does it use um, uh, one API? Is it going to use what what AMD is creating with its combination with Xilinx? We don't even know what middleware that uh, that this runs. But no, a lot a lot of questions. And look at us, we just fell right in. 